You ever wonder if frozen vegetables or fruits are as good as fresh vegetables or fruits in terms of their nutritional value and such? I, I definitely have wondered that. Yeah, my wife asked me about the other okay. day. She goes, you guys should make a video about fresh versus frozen vegetables and fruits. So Kelly, this one's for you. There you go. Welcome to Talking With Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Winnie. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. Before we get going, subscribe if you can. Come if on. it's not too much trouble for you to lift your finger and push the <laughs> subscribe, help us get from scrubs to two million subs. Yeah, most people actually are not subscribed. I'm not. Uh, yes, you are. <laughs> I'm just you are. kidding. Yeah. yeah. Okay, right. so the big, I, I suspect what most people think is, well, fresh has to be way better. Yeah, fresh Just is makes better. sense. You go, yeah. you pick it, eat it, done. I thought so. Yeah. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna dispel some stuff. So we looked into the research a little we, bit. Too. Yeah, dove deep into the process, and they've analyzed food that's been fresh and frozen to say, well, is it the same? Are we comparing apples to apples? Right, or apples to frozen apples. Right. So let's start at the beginning, the freezing process. So it's it's very as I say standardized. The time that it's actually done is depends on the type of produce. But what happens is the stuff is harvested, goes back to a facility where they typically would wash it. Then they do something called blanching. Mm -hmm. So blanching is when the, the produce is submerged in a rolling boil water, so 100 degrees Celsius, for a period of either seconds to potentially a couple of minutes. It really depends on what type yeah. of produce that you're, that you're planning to freeze. Then you take that produce out of the boiling water, you put it into ice cold water or ice water for the same amount of time that you blanched it. Mm -hmm. And then once that's done, then you put it into a flash freezer. And a flash freezer is not like your freezer at home in your fridge. It's not like minus six or minus 10. It's like minus 30 to minus 40 degrees Celsius. Yeah, so in Canada, we just pick the carrots in February and walk outside. That's right. I was gonna say more fall. I was gonna make a joke that that's like our fall temps. But oh, really? <laughs> yeah, but no, it's winter. I'm joking. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. minus 30 to 40. That's a, that's even here, that's a nasty that's Canadian cold. winter yeah. day. Where are your earmuffs? And the reason that they, they, they use such a cold temperature is because if you do it slowly, the water accumulates in ice crystals form, and this can, can have like taste and texture problems. So um, this is also why if your fridge becomes unplugged or you lose power mm -hmm. and everything thaws, and then mm -hmm. you freeze it again, you still, you still can eat the produce, but it will likely be icy. Yeah, not good. Not good. Ice, ice, baby. Yeah. All right, so that's the process, Kay. all right? So why don't we pick some of the common thoughts about frozen vegetables sure. and then determine whether those thoughts are true. Mythbusters, if you like. Okay, I used to really like that show. Mythbusters? Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. It was a cool show. Yeah. Okay, the first thing that comes to mind, or I thought anyways, was yep. the frozen vegetables and fruit do not have the same nutritional value as the fresh. Okay. You think that's true? So I, I might have argued that it was true before, but I know that the answer is probably not. It's oh. probably comparable. If you thought it was true, you'd be wrong way Feldman. Ra Remember okay. him? No. Wrong way Feldman? No. Episode five of Gilligan's Island. No, I, I, do, I do not really? remember that, no. You don't remember Gilligan's Island? I do, I remember the okay. show, I don't remember Feldman. Were you in the Marianne or Ginger? Probably Can more I? the Marianne. Yeah, me too. I, yeah. I, don't, I think I had a crush on her when I was a kid. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, You'd be wrong because the nutritional value, get this, might even be a little bit better with the frozen stuff. How's that possible? One way it's possible is that the frozen stuff is picked when it's ripe. Right. right? Prime ripe. Prime ripe. Yep. As opposed to being picked, traveling on a truck for a while or sitting on a shelf for a while before you get it where it could lose some of its nutritional value. Yep. So in some ways, some of the evidence suggests that, hey, maybe they do have the same or even better nutritional value in the frozen selection. Yeah, and they've done some studies that show that fiber content, exactly the same. So fiber is not affected by freezing Which at all. Which is a big reason you eat your vegetables. 100%. Um, minerals, definitely not affected at all. They're totally uh, heat and cold stable. And then the vitamins, particularly the water-soluble vitamins, are probably where things potentially change. So. Um, particularly vitamin C and some B vitamins. But what they've shown is, A, fresh produce in your fridge over time, as it ripens and over ripens, it loses maybe 10 to 15%. Right. And there is some thought that because vitamin C is um, heat sensitive, you can lose a little bit, Possibly. but it is still probably comparable. Right, still enough. Um, and the other thing to keep in mind too, one thing is important to mention, when you're talking about frozen vegetables, yeah. typically the frozen vegetables are ones you're gonna use in a cooked fashion, right? right. Like when you're preparing a meal. 
the fresh vegetables, often you can cook those or you eat those in a fresh fashion, like in a salad. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, the frozen a, lettuce is not no, the best. No, it doesn't do well. No. no. Kale ever, might do you ever so get, tough. It would, actually. Do you ever get that where your, your lettuce is at the back and sometimes the back mm. of your fridge and the air yeah. doesn't move and then you're like, I see lettuce. Now it's wilty. There's nothing that can't, lettuce can't come back. And yeah. that same, like a uh, hard frost actually kills lettuce outside yes. in your garden. Right. That's why you have to time your, time it right. your growth. Because right. nothing makes you less happy than a wilty salad. Right. Okay, so that's number one. Less nutrition, the answer is no. no. It's about the Wrong same. way, Feldman. Okay, so number two is that the process adds preservatives or chemicals. So it's simply not true. So we're just using water, hot water, cold water. And some people could argue that if because of this process, it actually might be cleaner, can remove some of the pesticides and other chemicals, even fertilizers and stuff like that, that are on the produce um, before, yeah. that are gonna be taken away by the, by the warm yeah. water as well as by the like cold water. Like a washing water. process. Yeah, so not true, you don't have to add anything to try to preserve it. And we've made a video about the different levels of food processing, because yeah. this is, in a way, a form of food processing. You're processing the food. However, this is a very light food processing where you're not adding chemicals to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we should link that video of the different levels of food processing sure. from not much to ultra processed food. Okay, number three. Um, the third thing is the quality. People think, oh, the frozen stuff is the bad stuff that was cast aside. Like we can't sell this stuff, let's freeze it and sell it in a bag. Oh, like that little, like the cart that's in some of the grocery stores that <laughs> you got like a 50% off. Yeah. You're like, here, come have this yeah. black banana. Yeah, why can I buy 12 peppers for a buck? Yeah. Yeah, no, not like that. No. And, and that just isn't true. The quality of the vegetables that are frozen are just as good, if not better, than the fresh vegetables that you're buying. It's just that they're picked at the peak ripeness and frozen and processed at that time. And I think, I think that's the other thing that people don't realize is that we, your produce here, like in Canada, it's all in season. Yeah. Um, if it's brought from elsewhere, it probably is picked before it's ripe, potentially, yeah. and then sent a long way to get here. So yes. yeah, I would agree. You could argue that maybe it's even, even potentially better. Yeah, I, in, a, in a climate like ours, for most of the year, we yeah. are dependent on frozen stuff or imported stuff. So right. either way, you're not getting it off the vine. Okay, number four is that frozen produce is always mushy. I hate the mushy vegetables. Right. So the ra main reason that this does happen with some potentially frozen vegetables is because of the water content. Mm -hmm. So this is why you can't freeze things like celery or cucumber. Mm -hmm. They just don't, or lettuce for that matter, they just don't lend themselves to freezing because mm -hmm. of the water content and then as it thaws, the crystallization. What happens is during the processes, the cell walls can break down. Yes. And that's what leads them to be, to be mushy. Cell walls have to break down because ice expands. If there's water that's in right. the it ice, bursts it bursts it, right? Yeah. Um, so that's why you'll never see frozen celery. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't exist. I guess theoretically you could use it if you put celery in your smoothies. You could freeze it, put it in your smoothie because it doesn't really matter to you. Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah, but yeah, yes. Because you're going to crush it up. Did you know that water is the only substance where that happens? Or what when, happens? When it, when, when it freezes, it expands. Oh, it actually changes its volume. Well, yeah. yeah, the density yeah. goes down. Like, and it's most dense at four degrees when it's liquid as opposed. It's just, it's just one of those. And that's the reason we're alive. Because when that happens with water in the lakes and the oceans, the ice rises to the top so life can go on below. Right. Any other material, the solid form would sink and the liquid be above, which would kill all the stuff. fish. Yeah, yeah it would be done. We wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here. The number five, the last myth we're going to discuss is okay. that, hey, these frozen fruits and vegetables are only good for making soups or smoothies. That's it. Okay. So I'd say they are good for that. They are, but not only, not good, only for good for that. Not only good for that. Right? As we discussed before, they are as good as any other vegetable, as good as the fresh stuff. They're at their peak ripeness. Yeah. And in fact, personally, I use it, I often use them when I'm doing like a fried rice. Yeah, stir fry. It lends itself nicely to stir fry. But I think generally, if you're going to boil your vegetables, a lot of times that, it's like the cooking process that mm -hmm. often makes them mushy. Right. It's not whether they were fresh or frozen. So yeah, things like carrots or cauliflower or broccoli, those actually hold their structure quite nicely yeah. if, you, if you steam them or microwave them or stir fry them instead. And same with, same with the fruit. Um, yeah. it's, still, it's still like a blueberry that's thawed. still looks still like a blueberry. blueberry. It's still a blueberry. And it's still blue. Tastes delicious, very good for you. It should be on your eat every day list, to be honest with you. And now, since we are talking about frozen stuff, yep. we should talk about freezer burn. Yeah, so freezer burn's an interesting thing. So It's a misnomer almost, isn't it? How can I burn if I'm in the freezer? Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess frostbite too. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so freezer... We call that frost burn. No, frost burn. But it is a burn. It's like we it talk is. about first and second and third degree burns. Yeah, it's like, it's yeah. like a burn. It's yeah. a bite. 
okay, refractive freezer burn. Right. So what happens is when the stuff that's in your freezer is exposed to the air, essentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so whether that's in a bag or in a Tupperware type of container, um, if it's exposed to air, then the liquid in that product goes through a process of sublimation and actually dries it out. Right. So it makes it dry, makes it harder. It doesn't make it any nutritionally less uh, viable or dense. It doesn't reduce the quality of it, but definitely will negatively affect the taste. And that's why if you compare like a sandwich bag to like a freezer bag, the freezer bag is much thicker yeah. and has a more advanced or tighter seal. Yeah. Do you ever use those vacuum pack sealers? We should uh, do a video about that. Yeah, so you know, I, I, I don't, I mean, but yeah. I do have a, almost like a vacuum tech pack sealer for like clothes and linens. It's oh. a really way to really reduce the volume. So you put like a vacuum oh. on a bag yeah. and it sucks it all. So then if you're taking I mean, your kid to school and yeah. your car's oh. full of a bunch of stuff. I never thought of putting my clothes in the freezer. No. <laughs> on a hot day. It's just putting it in a vacuum oh. bag where the volume is reduced. Okay. Like the air, since you're getting the yeah, air out. I thought you had been stuck in the freezer. No. It's going to be hot tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Can you put my sweater in the freezer, please? Thanks, honey. <laughs> there you go. Fresh versus frozen. Short answer is what, what's awesome I think about frozen is it allows us in countries where we can't grow it all the time, Come on, cut access all year long. Yep. The cost often is a little bit less. It is actually a little bit right? less, right? Because they don't cheaper. have to worry about the timely shipping and all that stuff. Um, they can mass produce it and, and mass package it. So it has actually a lot of benefits. I'm a big fan. I'm, I think there are a lot of advantages to the, yeah. the frozen vegetable, the frozen fruit, and we definitely have our freezers full of frozen vegetables and fruit. Absolutely. And, and sweaters. If you, if you like this video, if it's like it, subscribe to our channel and share it with someone that you think is kind of poo-pooing on frozen fruits and yeah. vegetables. Why would you put a sweater in the freezer <laughs> if it's a hot day? I know. Well, because I, I really want to wear a sweater, but it's too hot. <laughs> Uh, right? Just put the t-shirts. Just put your t-shirt in the freezer. Okay. Remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.